With this video, I want to demonstrate a simple testing recipe to work with emails uh, when writing integration tests for our Spring Boot applications. For this purpose, I've prepared a sample Spring Boot application that we are about to test. This sample application uh, has one public endpoint and sends an email to a user. For this, I've added three Spring Boot starter dependencies. First, the starter mail, then the Spring Boot starter web, and also the validation package. If we take a quick look at the public controller, so we have one REST API that maps to slash notifications, where we accept HTTP POST requests. These requests come with a JSON payload. This notification request here is the payload. As a user, we can pass two values, first and valid email to which we want to send an email to, and second, the actual content that should be part of the email. I've also added here the bean validation annotations. So each incoming JSON request has to be valid. So first thing is we need a valid email address and also the content has to be not empty. And each valid notification request object we pass down to our notification service. And this notification service is a simple Java class, which does the mail handling. So first thing is we are injecting the Java mail sender, which is uh, from Spring. So this is this interface wrapper around the Java mail API. To simplify the way we send emails from our Spring application, we are using um, a simple mail message here. So nothing fancy, no attachments, just a basic example where we send an email to a user. We will send the email by constructing a simple mail message object. So this object is also from Spring Mail. We set a static from address and also a static subject and then pass the text and the email to whom we want to send this email. And as a last step, we are using the Java Mail Sender to then actually send the email to the user. Due to Spring Boot's auto configuration, uh, we get a instance of this Java Mail sender configured for us. Whenever we configure the correct properties inside our application properties file. So here I've put in an example where we use uh, SMTP server of Google. So we could use our Gmail account to send emails to users. And as soon as we configure the required properties here, including the username and password, start our Spring Boot application. Spring Boot will configure the Java Mail Center for us. That's why we can inject it here with the public constructor of our notification service. We don't have to do any further configuration and then can send an email. When it now comes to writing tests for our Spring Boot application, the first thing we can do is whenever we write unit tests that somehow involve the notification service, we can for sure mock this notification service. So we can use Mokito to create a mock of this service class uh, to not send actual emails. But whenever we want to test our application as a whole and want to write an integration test where we trigger this public endpoint and then send out an email, we obviously don't want to use our Gmail credentials as we would then send actual emails to our users. For such scenarios, um, it makes sense to work with a sandbox email server. And within the Java testing ecosystem, Greenmail is a popular choice. So Greenmail is an open source and lightweight sandbox email server. It supports various email protocols and also comes with a Docker image and a standalone jar. So we could also, in theory, run this Greenmail server on our local machine while developing our application and don't spam the inbox of our users. We will now use Greenmail and integrate it to our Spring Boot project to then write a integration test where we trigger our public endpoint, send an email, and then as a last step, want to verify that we actually sent out a real email by taking a look uh, which emails arrived at the Greenmail sandbox server. To add Greenmail to our project, um, we need the following dependency. Uh, so here com.iScreen and then greenmail-junit5. So Greenmail comes with a JUnit Jupyter extension that we will use for our test to 
simplify the setup and use the extension mechanism of JUnit Jupyter to start and stop the local GreenMail server. That's everything we need for testing. And now we can jump right into the test. So first, let's create a new test. We want to write an integration test. So let's call it notification controller IT. As a first step, we want to start our entire application. So we are using at Spring Boot test with the web environment random port. So this will also start the embedded servlet container and we won't work with a mocked servlet environment. To access our application during the test, we are injecting the test rest template. This rest template is auto configured by Spring Boot for us and targets our locally started Spring Boot application, which starts on a random port. So by injecting the test rest template, we don't have to care at all about constructing the base URL. Everything is prepared for us. So therefore, let's write a first test. Let's say we want to make sure that we notify the user whenever we uh, call this public endpoint. To now invoke this public post endpoint, we have to prepare the HTTP request. So therefore, let's quickly construct uh, the relevant code. So as we send data alongside this request, as we send the JSON payload, we have to set some headers. So here first the content type. The content type will be application JSON. And the HTTP entity we pass along will be of type string. So we will use a JSON string as part of our body which is here the request. And here we now have to first pass the payload and then the headers. And for the payload, I have prepared a sample inline JSON. So this represents here a notification request. It has a valid email and a non-empty content. So here we send to duke at spring.io, hello world. With this in place, we can now fire the request. So therefore use the test rest template and then the post for entity. The path will be notifications. And as the request, we pass our request object. And for the response, as we don't return any object from our endpoint, we can pass in here void and then store the result here as a local variable, let's call this response. And the first test assertion can be, we are expecting here a response of 200. So in the happy path scenario, our endpoint should return here 200. And with this setup in place, we would still reach out to Gmail as we haven't uh, overwritten the Java mail properties yet. So therefore, as a first step, we have to register the GreenMail extension, which will then start the GreenMail server for us in the background. Therefore, let's use at register extension here and then construct the GreenMail extension. When constructing the GreenMail server, we can pass the mail protocols we want to support. In our example, SMTP is enough as we're just sending emails. We can also configure IMAP or POP and their corresponding secure ports. For our local testing, the unsecure SMTP port is fine. As a next step, we also have to pass a configuration as we have to authenticate against the local email server. We have to prepare a user that we use for the login. Let's call it Duke here and then pass a password of Spring Boot. And last but not least, as a small optimization, we will opt out um, and last but not least, as a small optimization, we will start the GreenMail server once for the entire test class. So by default, GreenMail would start a new GreenMail server for each test method. In our case, and to save some startup time, we will opt out here and say we only want a single instance for the entire test class and all its test methods. So with this in place, we now have to override the access to this mail server. What we can do, we can copy the existing configuration from our production profile 
and create a new application YAML within inside our test resources folder. Let's copy over this file and adjust it. So password we set Spring Boot. The username will be Duke. The host is now localhost. And as the port, the SMTP test port will run on 3025. We can retrieve this information from our setup here. So by default, Greenmail will use a offset and the default port, so SMTP default port is 25. And for this test setup, the default offset is 3000. So that's why we configured 3025. If we would use IMAP, for example, it would be 3143. So that's where the port information comes from. And with this configuration here, we are now good to go. If we now start our test, we should see a successful test case and green mail somewhere in the log. So first the test result is a green tick indicating our endpoint returned 200 and hence the email sending did work. If we search here for green mail in the logs, we will see um, prior to starting the spring context, a uh, green mail um, kicked in. So here the JUnit Jupyter extension made sure to start green mail prior to executing our test. We can see here it successfully started with the SMTP port as we've configured it. With this successful test case in place, let's still add a additional check. So we want to actually make sure that also the email arrived at the Greenmail Sandbox server. Even though our application said it sent the email, it might still happen that the email did not arrive or it didn't arrive as we have expected it to look like. So therefore we can um, use the Greenmail extension and request all the messages that were received for this test run. So this will return here an array of MIME messages and we can store it here as a local variable. First thing we can ensure as we only want to send one email, we can make sure that the length of this array is one. So not that our implementation somehow sent the email twice. With this verification, we can now also get the first message from this array and we can store it here also as a variable and then can write further assertions. So the first thing we want to make sure is as we've passed here, hello world as the payload, we want to make sure it also arrives here. So therefore we can use a green mail utility to extract the body of the received message. So this will return the message as a string. As an additional verification mechanism, we can also make sure that the recipient matches our payload. So here we can use the received message again and can access all the recipients. It's also here an array which is returned. So this should be of size of length one. As this might throw an exception, we can also add exception here to our test. And as the last verification step, let's make sure that the recipient really is duke at spring.io whenever we access here the first element in the array. With this further checks, let's rerun the test. And we are seeing here a test failure. That's because we are comparing two different um, objects. So also IntelliJ here already gives us the hint. We are comparing a string with an address. So we have to put in here two string to actually compare the same objects. Let's rerun the test. And then we will see here a successful test case. And if we now modify our payload, so let's say we adjust here the content, we should see a test failure. It is, this doesn't match our actual email content. And that's what also IntelliJ reports here. We expected hello world, but it was hello Duke as we modified here the payload. So let's put this back. And with this sample test, you now have a recipe that you can use whenever you want to write integration tests that involve email sending and want to use a local sandbox email server.